All right, so good morning, everybody. My name is Christian, and today I'm going to cover insect viruses when insects get sick. And if you have any questions, you can ask the moderators in the chat, and they'll post your questions with an answer. Just give a quick recap. We learned that about vectors, which are insects or other organisms that transmit diseases. And there are in insects are both human vectors and plant vectors. Human vectors include mosquitoes, and plant vectors include white flies but insects themselves can also get sick. We call this insect pathology, which is basically a study of what can go wrong in an insect. And to get started, I'm gonna go over some brief concepts of insect pathology. So first is the infectious agent. Basically, this is what causes diseases in an insect. And most often, these are microorganisms, which we call entomopathogens, because they are pathogenic to insects. And these include fungi, bacteria, nematodes, and of course today's topic, viruses. Next is the portal of entry. As Lewis mentioned uh, in the Kahoot quiz, there's vertical transmission and horizontal transmission. Basically it's vertical transmission, an infected mother lays an egg and that offspring will then also have the virus. There's active transmission, which is basically the same thing as us being bitten by, by a mosquito contracting malaria. Basically, an insect gives another insect a disease. There is also ingestion through the mouth, and this is the most common. Uh, basically, an insect will go and eat an infected plant part or another part of an insect, and they too will have the virus. There is virulence also. Basically, this is how severe of a disease does a virus cause, and this can vary between species say one species of virus gives an insect a very mild uh, disease while another species causes a very uh, deadly disease. Virulence also depends on the amount of viral copies that's in the insect. If there's few viral copies, there may not be much of a disease, but if there's many viral copies, the disease is much more severe. And then there are signs and symptoms of diseases. A uh, sign is pretty much physical evidence of a vector. And a symptom would be a behavioral change or morphological or physical changes in appearance. And here we see a honeybee with two mites on it. And then we also see some deformed wings. So in this case, the mites are the signs of infection and the, and the deformed wings are the symptom of infection. So quick, get a, a quick history on insect pathology. The first pathogens were described in silkworms and honeybees. Both these are very beneficial insects. Silkworms make your grandma's awesome scarves, and honeybees, of course, give us honey and colonnade crops. And speaking of honeybees, I'm going to go into a virus that infects honeybees as well as other bee species, such as bumblebees. So, as I showed earlier, deformed wings. This is because of deformed wing virus. And this virus was first isolated in the early 1980s in Japan. It is thought that this virus is a naturally occurring virus in honeybees, but it is present at such low levels that it doesn't ever really affect the bees negatively. Um, however, if the, if the viral titers increase or the virulence, it becomes very damaging to the bees. So in this case, deformed wing virus is our infectious agent. So how do bees get deformed wing virus? As I mentioned earlier, there's a portal of entry or how the virus invades a hun uh, an insect. So in this case, we have to have a vector to get this disease. And of course, this disease is vectored by the varroa destructor mite, which you can see here feeding on the larva. So how is deformed wing virus spread within the colony? Basically, you have a honeybee that has a couple copies of the virus, and then a varroa mite goes and feeds on that honeybee. And in doing so, it picks up a couple copies of the deformed wing virus. It is thought that the virus also replicates within the mite. So then that mite goes and feeds on another honeybee, but this one's healthy, doesn't have any copies of the deformed wing virus. But while feeding, the mite inje injects some copies of the virus, and then that virus then replicates within that new honeybee. The more often this happens, this, the virulence will increase, and more bees will have this virus, and especially at higher levels. So why do we even care about this virus? As the name suggests, Deformed wing virus pretty much causes the wings to be crippled in honeybees. This is especially uh, important for an insect that has to travel flower to flower to gather food. And also with uh, this virus, it shortens the lifespan of honeybees. So 
This is especially important for winter when the colony has to stay strong and warm to survive. If many bees die off before it gets too cold, the whole colony may not survive. In some previous lectures, we learned the differences between beneficial and pest insects. And do you think there are more beneficial or pest species of insects? If you think there are more pest species, you are not correct actually. Only about 1% of insects are considered pests. So what makes an insect a pest? Well, they can be damaging to crops, other plants, such as stink bugs. They can be invasive, such as emerald ash borer, or they can be harmful to humans or other animals, such as mosquitoes. And so how do we control insects? As you may know, we usually use chemicals to control insects, and these are called insecticides. Although they're great, if they're used correctly, they can have very harmful effects. Um, if you spray before rain, the insecticides may leach into the soil or go into a river and infect uh, fish or other animals, such as humans. And also, if, o if overused without rotating modes of action, insects can then become uh, resistant to these chemicals, thereby making them ineffective at controlling that insect. So another option to control insects is using biological controls. Basically, it's just biological agents used to control a particular insect. And these can be predatory or parasitic insects. They can also be entomopathogenic nematodes or fungi and bacteria. But as you may have learned, viruses are not living. Can they, can they be biological, biological controls? Absolutely. Viruses are used to control insects. They're what are known as specialist insecticides, meaning that they only infect a certain type of uh, species. So in this case, uh, many uh, viruses are used to control caterpillar larvae, which are moth larvae. So these uh, most commonly used biopesticides are baculoviruses and nucleopolyhedra viruses. So how do these viruses work against controlling these caterpillars? Basically, a farmer will go out and apply these viruses to his field, and then the caterpillar will then go and ingest some of the leaves, and in doing so, it picks up a couple uh, virus particles. The virus then moves into the midgut and, and dissolves, and releases virions, the virions then move throughout the midgut and into other cells throughout the insect. The virus then makes the tissues or organs rupture. And in doing so, the insect basically falls apart and dies within five to 12 days. And when the insect falls apart, uh, the virus gets released back into the environment and so it can control more insects that feed on these plants. So this sounds great, all, right? Awesome. We can use these instead of insecticides. But just as there are drawbacks to insecticides, there are drawbacks to using viruses to control insects. So why aren't we using more viruses? So viruses are only effective against immature uh, caterpillars, meaning that the farmer has to uh, time his application of these insecticides at a precise time just to gain minimal control. Also, many pests may be present at one time. You're not only going to have caterpillars, you may have more caterpillars that can't be controlled by these viruses, but you're also going to have true bugs or other beetles. So therefore, virus is going to be used as a tool in the toolbox of IPM in rotation with other insecticides. Also, viruses are not very stable in the environment, so the farmer has to frequently apply these viruses just to have minimal control, which is both time-consuming, money-intensive, and labor-intensive. We live in a busy world. So with that, I'd like to thank you for tuning in. Just to do a little recap, we learned about insect pathology and some basic terms. We learned how viruses can affect certain species of insects. We also learned how we can use viruses to control insects, such as the corn earworm caterpillar. And with that, I'll take any questions y'all may have.